Hey, this is Mr. Burns. We're sitting here in the home recording studio trying out a new app today. And we're going to continue our lessons with women's history. And what we're going to take a look at today is the early 1800s, what it was like for women in education. So in the early 1800s, the first primary or elementary schools were started that would take women. And also the first colleges were taken that would admit women. So that's the focus of our lesson today, and let's get started. So here's how things started to change in our country for women in American society. One of the first fields to open up to them was the teaching profession. Another one was also in health reform, and women began to work and serve in region, local and regional hospitals. They weren't doctors, but they were allowed to be nurses. So teaching and nursing were two of the fields that first opened up for women. Interestingly enough, uh, one of the other important places for women in our society was the churches. Now, few churches allowed women to become ministers, but the interesting thing is that, just like today, women do a lot of the work in the church. So when there's a wedding to be organized and supervised, it's the women that do that. The little um, social groups are usually run by women in a church. When there's a funeral, it's the women that take care of the day-to-day -day operations of the church. So many women found early leadership roles in America's churches. The last thing I kind of wanted to point out here is the anti-slavery movement. So that's right there, anti-slavery movement. That was another area where women uh, stepped up and they tried to abolish slavery in this country and they played a very important role during this time period in trying to get rid of slavery. Just a real brief thing on this slide is Emma Willard and Mary Lyon are two very important American women in the fields of education. Emma Willard is going to start the first school to educate women in the primary grades. And Mary Lyon is going to start the first college that educated women in the United States. Emma Willard is going to play an important role in the state of New York. She started the Troy Women's Seminary in 1821. Now, this is a primary school, so think of, you know, grades like four, five, and six. And they're going to start educating women in the community. Uh, religion is going to be one of the important subjects that they teach in addition to reading. So this is like the first school which is admitting women. Uh, many families in the early 1800s did not think it was important to educate their daughters. So the next thing we want to take a look at is Mary Lyon. And Mary Lyon is the founder of Mount Holyoke Female Seminary. And she started this in way back in 1837. So this is the first college in the United States. Another interesting thing about Mary Lyon, and this is a picture of her right there, is that she started the, like I said before, the first college in the United States. And again, it's a seminary, so religion is important, uh, an important subject that they taught in college, in addition to reading and writing. You know, rolling further to the west, we have Oberlin College in Ohio, and Oberlin is going to be very important because its first graduating class of women is going to roll out in 1841. And Oberlin is going to produce many leaders that are going to step up in American society in the 1840s and 1850s. And these people are going to be very active in the anti-slavery movement and they're also going to be very active in the women's movement. The women's movement got rolling because of the anti-slavery movement. And the ironic thing there is that um, women were not treated very well in the anti-slavery movement. Let me pause my screen for a second here. There was one final way that women could receive an education in American society. And that's kind of the route that Dr. Harriet Hunt took. Uh, Dr. Hunt studied with male physicians to learn the craft of medicine. 
So she was not able to go to medical school, but she practiced for years with male doctors in order to learn the trade. So you kind of got to give a shout out to some of those male doctors that were willing to uh, take on Dr. Hunt and help teach her their craft because they probably were not looked on with favorable eyes by many of their other doctors. Uh, through her work and practice with these men and through working with women, she was given an honorary medical degree in 1853. And it's not that she didn't try to go to college. She applied to Harvard twice, and both times her application was rejected. The real ironic thing there is that, you know, from the time of Dr. Hunt, it's going to be almost 100 years before Harvard will even consider taking a woman into their medical school. So I like this. One of the interesting things about Dr. Hunt is that in her practice, she can she restricted that to just treating women patients. 